Hello and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pool podcast. I'm your host, Hilmarie Hutchison, and today I am thrilled to have a truly inspiring guest with me. Joining me is Kadrea Al Alwadi, the 27 year old Emirati founder and CEO of Bumblebee, a homegrown business that provides ready made frozen meal plans for babies and toddlers. Not only is she a passionate entrepreneur, she also juggles a full time role at one of the world's largest financial institutions, all while aligning her business with the UAE's National Strategy for Wellbeing 2031. Kadrea, welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be a part of this podcast. And I'm so excited to have you here. So to start off, could you tell our audience a little bit about you and your background? So my name is Kadrea. I come from my business background. I studied business in school, in college, and in my master's. And then I went and worked for a bank, and then I decided to open Bumblebee. That was short and sweet. So you grew up in Dubai, you went to school in Dubai, and you studied in the UAE? Yes. So I'm a Marathi, so I've spent, you know, my whole life here, grew up here and went to, uh, to the schools here as well. Your journey with Bumblebee began when you noticed a gap in the market while babysitting your friend's son. Can you tell us more about that moment and what it personally meant to you as someone who wasn't yet a mother, but felt compelled to take action? Actually, I was babysitting my friend's son. And, you know, I was feeding him those little supermarket packets. You know, it didn't have any color. Even when I tasted it, it didn't have any flavor. And when I turned it around the pouch, it said that the production date was about seven months ago. So imagine I am feeding the baby something that was cooked before he was even born. So that was a big shock for me. And when I asked my other friends who are mothers, I asked them about it. They all said that they faced the same thing, which is that they don't have any fresh or even healthy food for their babies and their kids. So I started experimenting, you know, with some flavors. I started sending them. It was a success. They were my little critics. And that's basically how the idea was born. Wow, how incredible. For sure, you could see that there was a gap. As a young entrepreneur, what challenges did you face when starting Bumblebee and especially in balancing nutrition, taste and convenience? It's two parts, right? So the first one was opening a business. Even though I come from a business background, actually opening your own business and being entrepreneur comes with its own set of challenges. For example, you know what I used to do in, even in my job, I just analyze other companies. But now when it comes to your own company, you have to do everything from scratch. You know, the approvals, the business, you have to be the lawyer, you have to be the cook. You have to be the marketer, you have to be the brand, the strategy, you have to be everything when you're, you know, first starting the business. So in that sense, it was definitely challenging to understand how the business works and how it should run and operate smoothly. But then the second part uh, came with the nutrition itself, because there is a misconception about if the food is healthy, then it doesn't taste good. And there is some truth to that. When we were cooking, some of the foods that we were experimenting with, especially for the toddlers, they just didn't eat it you know, the kids, because they were so used to eating salt in the food since they're babies, that when salt is absent in the food, they think that it just doesn't taste good. This was something that we faced, at least with my family members, my little cousins, when I used to feed them, because they're so used to eating, you know, curry and biryani, and those are so rich in salt. So when I gave them my food, it was such a change for them. I hired a professional chef and I actually even went to culinary school myself to learn how to adapt the flavors, to learn how to mimic those salty and sweet tastes without actually adding salt and sugar in the food. Then, you know, we got good feedback from our little critics and that's how it was a success. So you really had to go through each tiny step of the process to develop a solution. How long did this all take you? Before I launched, it was about a year, you know, trying and doing recipes because even when I first did it. It was just for toddlers. It wasn't really for babies. And then my friends were asking for their babies. So I started to develop that. And then the soft launch was a year where, you know, I was just selling to my family, my extended members and just select number of people. So I would say the whole process took about two years before officially launching. And since the official launch after the whole development process, how has the response been? How has the acceptance been for Bumblebee? It's been really good. At first, it was a bit, even today, for new customers, it's a different concept to tell them about frozen food, especially, you know, frozen baby food. It's a new concept and 
It's something that's unique. It's something that only Bumblebee has in the entire UAE. In that sense, it was a bit different to have to explain it to the moms, especially because before I was just communicating with email. So, you know, it's hard to do it on text. But then I just learned that just asking for their phone number and explaining it to them is much easier. And I started putting on, you know, more tutorials on the Instagram. And then it became just really easy. You know, I just had to simplify it for them that it was just purely just putting, you know, the frozen food in hot water and that's it. It was a bit complicated in the beginning, the way I was explaining it. So I had to learn, you know, with the more customer that I was interacting with as to how to make it smooth and easy for them as possible. Yes. And I think, as you say, videos do help because it just makes the process a lot easier for people to understand. Well, congratulations. What a journey from finding a solution, not for yourself, really, but for somebody else's baby to running a business that's doing so well. Fantastic. In addition to running Bumblebee, I know you also manage a full-time job at a global financial institution. How do you balance the demand for both roles? So I was lucky when I was first actually starting the business, I could manage it a bit easily because there wasn't much work going on at one time at one job versus the other. So in that sense, I could balance both. There wasn't really a time when both of them were demanding at the same time. You know, when this one was busy, this one was a bit quiet. And when that one was busy, that one was a bit quiet. In that sense, I was very, very lucky. So now I was able to actually build a team at Bumblebee and the business basically just runs itself without me having to just micromanage everything like I was in the early stages of the business. Excellent. Yes, it's fantastic when you've got it to that point where you are not the sole person driving things forward, where you've got other people able to keep things going when you're not around. Excellent. I know what's also important to you is to help young people, especially in the financial field. How has your own upbringing and experience shaped this desire to give back? And what do you hope young people will learn from your story? As I mentioned earlier, I did come from a business background. My family, they're all into business entrepreneurship. They all had their own business or they all worked in the corporate world until they started their own business. So I really was inspired to follow in their footsteps as well. And that's really what I did. You know, I worked in corporate until I opened my own business. You know, everybody is different and everybody has a different dream. So I like to help people realize their potential, even if it's not necessarily opening your own business, even if it's just working in the corporate world. I try to help as much as I can. One of the things that I actually do is volunteer to help them. So I actually did participate in a few regional and international competitions to guide and to mentor young kids. And so far in all of the competitions that I went, I actually won three out of the five competitions that I guided my kids to. It's so lovely to see even with so much responsibility already that you're taking our time to help especially young people to guide them to be a mentor for them. That's absolutely brilliant. As someone who is both deeply connected to your Emirati roots and also highly ambitious, how do you see yourself evolving as both an entrepreneur and a woman in the Middle East? I am very lucky to be living in the United Arab Emirates where there is so much support for women in the form of businesses, in the form of the presidents. Everyone here supports each other, not just women. You know, it's not really just so much about man versus woman, but everyone here is supportive of everyone's dream regarding if you're Emirati or not. So this is the one thing that I suppose makes me very, very lucky to be born here, to see this collaboration between everyone. Because at the end of the day, everybody here wants the same thing, which is to improve the UAE, right? To make it a better country, to make it a safe country where we can all, you know, live happily. And I'm excited to see where my journey takes me in that sense. And what advice would you give to women looking to start their own business in the UAE, especially in industries related to children's health and well-being? The first thing I would say is to research that market, you know, go to read about it, read news news articles about it, even if it's international. The market is so niche, you can't necessarily find regional information. Find international because at the end of the day, we're such a connected and global world that it won't really be that different, you know, market to market. So in that sense, you know, read about it first, understand if that's something you really want to get into. And then when you want to start a business, I would say you should really, the first thing that you should be very, very wary of, even if you have to spend money to make sure it's perfect, is your budgeting and, you know, your cash flows, your estimate your projection, those things have to be right. Because a common mistake that at least I used to do in the beginning was going over budget and justifying it by saying, no, no, it's okay, you know, I'll get the returns. It's okay, it's okay, I can spare a few extra, you know, I can spend a few extra dirhams here and there. But that's the hole that it gets you, right? When you spend and spend, and then you'll see that 
you basically spread yourself too thin. You know, you didn't grow as thin in the way that you wanted to. So I would say that having the financial part of it right is very, very important. That's the most important thing that you can do before opening a business. I think that's excellent advice. And especially from somebody like you, who you bootstrapped your way into Bumblebee, as far as I understand, you use your own money to invest and to start it. So you understand, especially also with your finance background, you understand the importance of managing finances well. Could you please share some advice for aspiring entrepreneurs on managing finances when launching your business? I would say don't overspend. It's so tempting to get the biggest machine that you can see. For example, I'm just going to make it a bit more FNB related. It's so easy, you know, to upgrade, to go for the really, really expensive machine that's efficient, that has more output. But then how can you justify that price? For example, a 30,000 dirham price tag if you don't even have the demand for it, because at the end of the day, you need to find a return on your investment. So in that sense, I would say don't spend so much in the beginning. Try to establish your place. Try to find the demand. Try to position yourself within your customers. And then you can just upgrade easily because at the end of the day, it's just a machine. It's not like, a, I suppose, employees, which you have to train and, you know, you have to spend months on. It's just a machine that you can just quickly buy and it's there. So in that sense, I would say don't spend so much on machinery, on tools, on tech in the beginning. Specifically, you know, if you are in the FNP field like I'm. Very, very good advice. Oftentimes, something that is used secondhand is just as good. It does the job. It doesn't have to be out of the box brand new. So I think that was very smart advice to give. It's even less than half the price and even the lifespan of it is going to last you almost the entire business. Hopefully until you upgrade, hopefully until you know you expand, it's going to be just as good. So don't worry about second hand that it doesn't get bad breath. Everything is covered by warranty. Almost everything can be fixed. So don't worry so much about you know having the top of line machinery in the beginning. Excellent advice. We also don't need all the bells and whistles when you're just uh, starting out. Start out first, see where the need is, see if it's going to be a product that's going to be in demand. And you can always add extra things as you find out, well, I actually need that item. Don't overspend in the beginning. Excellent advice. Thank you so much for that. Looking ahead, what are your growth plans for Bumblebee? Are there any new product lines or expansions that you are particularly excited about? Sure. So we just expanded our range because we are for frozen. That's our food, but that's our bread and butter, I suppose you could say. But recently, we just expanded to dry snacks. A lot of our customers were struggling with school and they were struggling, you know, with their travel. And the best way to help them and the best way to address it was to provide dry snacks. So we have, for example, cookies like oat cookies. We have cheese crumbles. We have even pizza cookies. So they're just some of the range that we have. No, sorry, we recently just launched. And the good thing about them is that they're dry snacks, so they're not temperature controlled. You can leave them in room temperature, but they are still, you know, fresh. And, you know, there is still no added salt, no sugar, no additives, no preservatives, none of those things that you can basically find at the supermarket shelf because everything here is cooked in Bumblebee, you know, to order. So you can be assured that, you know, you get the freshest, uh, freshest meals possible. So this is the one thing that I'm really, really excited about. And we tested it out with our customers. Customers and they're such a big hit. So now we're, you know, investing in expanding the line and introducing more flavors and hopefully, you know, stocking them at more locations because right now you can only buy them through our website or through the events that we participate in. But, you know, we're expanding now to provide our cookies and our dry snacks to suppliers around UAE. Outside of the website, are there specific locations where consumers can find Bumblebee products? Right now, we just stock our snacks at one retailer but we're hopefully now finalizing to sell with more. Do you want to say who the retailer is so people can go and find it? So just the one that we're stocking actually right now with is Playtorium. It's a nice play area that, you know, we're together with. Hopefully, you know, the other ones, once we finalize, we'll just announce it, you know, we'll make a big announcement on our Instagram. We have really exciting things in the pipeline. And you said that was Playtorium. Where is that located? The Playtorium is in actually Meadows Village. So if you're near Bird Dubai, you can go there and get Bumblebee there. Otherwise, you can just order from our website. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for those wonderful insights and that excellent advice. It's now time for a fun segment of our show, our rapid fire round. Here I'm going to throw you some quick fire questions your way and you'll have to answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? Sure. One word that best describes you. I don't know, loyal. If you weren't in finance, what would you be doing? Definitely, I would be an archaeological anthropologist because when I was growing up, Indiana Jones was my favorite. So something like that would have been amazing. What's your go-to stress reliever after a long day? 
swimming. Oh, lovely. What's your favorite place in Dubai to relax and unwind? Nothing in particular. I just go to a new one every time. Well, thank you for playing along. That was easy enough. Now I would like to ask you about your green pool moment. If you took the green pool to go back in time and change one thing about your journey, what would it be? I think the one thing, at least my younger self, is to save a bit more money. No, you don't need two colors of the same bag. It's something I would tell myself because, you know, especially early in my career, when you first transition, you know, from a college student to someone who's working and getting paid, you get so excited about the money. At least I did. So I used to spend almost on everything and um, I would get even the same thing in just different shades and different colors. So I would just tell myself to rein in the spending. I think that is brilliant advice, especially like you say, when you first start earning, it's so easy just to think it's never ending. But once you learn that there is probably bigger things that you could sa- use your money for if you just saved it, like starting a business maybe one day. That's uh, excellent advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you for being here and sharing your fantastic and inspiring story with us today. It's been absolutely compelling. And I'm sure our audience is going to really enjoy this conversation. Before we wrap up, could you please tell our listeners where they can find and follow you? And I'll also put this in the show notes. We can find us on bumblebeefood.com through our website and you can find our Instagram at bumblebee underscore AE. Excellent. Thank you again. It was so lovely having you here today. I wish you all the very best and also wish you all the very best with uh, Bumblebee and beyond. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be on this show and I've been such a fan for a long time. So thank you. Lovely. Thank you. And to all our listeners, if you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to like, share and subscribe to the Matrix Greenpool podcast. Your support helps us to bring more inspiring stories to the forefront. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.